Hey everybody and welcome to the Wolf Pit. It's a beautiful day here in Virginia. The temperatures are in like the mid 50s and um, no wind blowing, sun's out. It's actually a very beautiful day. It'd be actually a good day to be doing just about anything outside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, do uh, some pulled uh, beef tonight. Today, tonight, it'll be done by tonight. So what I'm almost what I'm gonna start off doing here. This is a um, it's like a three and a half pound chuck roast, bone in chuck roast, and um, as you can tell, there's a little bit of frost on. It's still a little bit frozen. I'm gonna coat it up good with uh, some Worcestershire sauce to um, give the um, the rub I made um, something to stick on to, and a little bit of marinade. You won't really taste it when it's done, but so anyway, what we're gonna do is add um, some some rub that I made. So, I'm not sure how good you can see this, but the rub I made um, has uh, sea salt, uh, lots of black pepper in it, um, chili powder, garlic, onion powder, uh, turbinado sugar, and um, chili powder. I'm not sure if I mentioned that before, but let's see if I can get you a close up here. I'm not sure how good it's going to turn out, but anyway, we're going to get this on the meat. We're going to give it a liberal, liberal dose in here. Mm. I put on more than I usually need or want. Um, it will um, it'll create a nice bark, especially with the sugar and the salt combination. So I'm gonna stop using the spoon here. I never do anyway. So I'm gonna just liberally coat both sides of this. And let let the sugar and salt melt in. What'll happen is the sugar, um, the salt will um, start making the leach, uh, the meat leach, meaning get it wet, and then. Um, It'll start absorbing the um, the flavors from the rub, and the, it'll start melting the sugar, and that's what gives you a nice, nice caramelization when you're um, when you're smoking. So we're gonna flip this over. And like I said, it's still partially frozen, not completely frozen, but um, so then we're gonna put some Worcestershire sauce on this side. Don't be shy. All right, and then. We're going to season up this side liberally again. And we're going to let this sit for about 30 minutes. Put this on there. And again, I mean, it might look like I'm going overkill on the rub, but just bear with me and watch, and you'll see how it turns out. And like I said, a lot of this rub's going to melt, and um, you know, some of it's going to fall off when we're transferring it over to the grill. So we're going to let it sit for about 30 minutes, and we'll come back and You'll see the difference in the rub then. All right, so the meat's been sitting out for about 30 minutes. And if you can tell where it's getting darker there, that's where it's starting to leach and thaw out a little bit. But I want to go ahead and get this started so we're not eating at midnight tonight. Um, this is, like I said, this is only a three and a half pound roast, but it'll take, uh, I don't know, four or five hours to cook. But what we're going to do is um, we're going to cook it for a couple hours just in the smoke, and then we're going to foil it to finish it up. And we're not going to monitor temperatures of the grill or the meat. Um, what I'm going to do is let it cook until it has a nice, it's starting until it starts to get a nice bark on it. Uh, the bark is the, the formation of the, the caramelized sugars and proteins on the outside of the meat, if you don't know. Um, so once it gets that, um, that, that adds a ton of flavor to the meat, and then we're going to wrap it in foil and let it braise in its own juices. Um, at that point, you could put it in a pan and um, do like one of my other recipes, like pepper stout beef and um, mix it with peppers and onions and um, Worcestershire and uh, a stout beer. Um, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna have this as pulled beef tonight. Um, so you don't monitor temperatures on, on beef, in my opinion, um, because, or, or on, on chuck roast, what I mean. Um, because I mean, it's done when it's done. Um, you know, that's the old cliche with barbecue, but it's really true. It's more true with beef than it is with pork. Um, chuck is like one of the most toughest pieces of meat you're going to get and my idea of when it's done if you want pulled meat is when you can stick a fork in it and you can twist it easily like spaghetti so that's the that's the texture and the tenderness we want to get it to today so we're going to go ahead and start I got a uh, lump charcoal here and I have four pieces of apple wood in there um, you can use any kind of wood you want the apple wood is about as mild as you get um, you can use cherry, oak hickory, you know, whatever, you know, beef is pretty friendly with any kind of smoke wood. So as you can tell, I already got the, um, the meat on here and, uh, you know, if you watch any of my past videos, you know, I 
put the cold meat on a cold grill and then I like the the grill when I'm smoking when I'm when I'm barbecuing so this that's what we're doing today we're barbecuing and we're gonna hopefully cook in the between 250 300 degree range if it goes higher fine um, you know you don't need to necessarily be particular with your temperatures with um, what we're doing today so anyway here we go I'm gonna get the torch going and um, it's gonna get noisy here for a second and um, get this get a, we're gonna light a small uh, spot of charcoal and get a piece of wood going as well I got the bottom vents 100% open and I will also once I put the lid on here leave the top vent open for just a few minutes to get the temperature going up and then we'll turn it off then we'll close them down a little bit You don't need to light much when you want when you're cooking with them. Um, when you're, you know, trying to keep lower temperatures in the grill. So you, you know, just light a couple little spots, and you're done. Now on this particular grill, there's vents on both sides, uh, and the wind is kind of changing direction. We have to close across the house, so I'm going to actually light this in two spots today. Normally I would just do one. Um, this will keep the airflow and the um, the heat equal. Like this one more time here. All right. That's all there is to that. You don't want to, um, you know, if you want to keep your temperatures low, then light a small fire, let it slowly, you know, gradually climb up, and then adjust the temperatures with your with your vents. Because um, once you get it hot, it's it's hard to get down. Um, so, I'm gonna leave the lid off just for about I don't know three or four minutes. And then once the um, the coals are going, you know, to the way I like them, I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on, the vent over top of your meat. That way you get the, the convection from the heat over there, and it's going to suck it through here and have to come out through the through the vent that is right over top of the heat. So you get, you get the convection effect. Um, if you put the vent on the other side, right over where the fire's at, your fire's your your heat's going to go right out the top. So hopefully that made sense. It makes sense to me. So we'll be back in a few minutes. All right. The uh, the fire's been going for about five minutes now. And as you can tell, right over here, there's a piece of wood that's already caught. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and put the lid on. And um, like I said, the vent over top of your meat. And um, we're going to close it and let it go for about two hours. I got the side vents um, shut down. Uh, to uh, about 25% open. Let me see if you can see this over here. I'm not sure if I can get in there right. But you see the, the vents are just barely open. Um, same thing on this side. Okay, so that's just going to give you just enough airflow to keep that fire burning clean and burning, not smoking. You don't want, or not smoldering is what I meant. Um, so we're going to let this go for about two hours. And then come back and double wrap it in some foil and um, and then let it start its brazing process. Let me get a close up on this rub here. I threw it together real quick. See, it's got a nice, it's, it's gonna have this meat's gonna have a nice crust to it um, from the sugar and salt and the pepper. And I did forget to mention, I added a little bit, I added maybe two, two teaspoons of cinnamon in there as well. Love cinnamon in my rubs and especially works good with um, pork. But I, you know, I've noticed over the years that it also works well with uh, beef. Um, you know, you don't want a whole lot, but you want it, you want to keep it subtle, because you obviously don't want your your meat tasting like a dessert. So, um, but anyway, enough talking, and let's let this meat get smoking. All right, there are um, a three-pound roast been out in the smoke, unfoiled for about three hours almost. Um, like I said, I wasn't monitor monitoring the temperature or anything, and it's, got, it's finally got a nice little bark to it. It's not really as hard as I want to, but it's fine. It got dark outside. It, it's getting cold, and um, once you foil, once you foil it anyway, it doesn't really matter if it's on the grill or not because it you know you're just burning fuel once you foil it. So I'm gonna finish this in the oven. Um, so we're gonna go ahead. I got this in a metal pan. And um, you can use a glass pan, or you can just boil it like you would on a grill. Um, so I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to put this into a 300-degree oven until it's tender. Again, there's, there's no 
There's no temperature. Um, if you want to monitor temperature, start checking for tenderness at around 195 um, for this particular cut. Otherwise, just check it. Um, I'm going to put it in there and I'm going to check it after about two hours. Um, then after that, about every 30 minutes. And then once you can stick a fork in it and twist it easily, um, then it's done. So we're going to put it in there and just let it cook. And um, we're going to go ahead and make some potato salad and coleslaw to go along with this. And we'll be back in a little bit. All right, here we go. The um, the roast now has been cooking for about, I don't know, about four and a half hours or so. And let's see if it's done. Looks more like a pot roast now, but it did get its time in the smoke. So we're going to stick the fork right in the middle of it. And let's see if it twists. Here we go. Doing two fingers up here at the top. And um, there we go. We got the spaghetti twist right there in the middle. Let's see if it pulls out. That right there is a sign that it's done. That is when your chuck roast is done. But there are also um, different types of mussels in here. So we're going to do this again on the other side. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and give this a taste real quick. If you can see this. Let's see how it turned out. That's horrible. You guys don't want that. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I can feel throughout the roast that it's done. I'm going to let it cool before I pull it. I don't want it to dry out. As you can see, the knife is going in, or the, the fork is going in, all the way through, all the way around. And with that twist right there in the middle that you just saw, like I call that my spaghetti twist, um, that just shows you that it's done. So we're gonna let this cool. We're gonna drain off the fat. Um, and come back. And this is really the, the taste is phenomenal. So we'll be back in a few minutes. All right, I started I started pulling this stuff without um, hitting record here. So now we're gonna go ahead and show you how to pull this. All this right here is already pulled. So you know, see how tender it is right now. I'm gonna get two forks one opposite the other and just start pulling it apart and then what this will do is it will uh, when, when you're pulling it if you do it um, you know if you get your fork in one side of it you can kind of work around because with, with um, beef chuck roast there's going to be there's going to be some um, tough pieces in there at some point and um, if you get it right you can just you know, work your way around them and pull it. Um, but this one right here so far, I haven't really run into any, but you know, you just kind of, you just kind of brush it like you would, you know, your hair or something with a fork. That's kind of really a, a gross analogy when you think about eating. Um, but just move the fork back and forth and we'll do it again on this side and show you how it is. Here's a fresh side of meat here we hadn't pulled yet. And I got my dog underneath the TV tray here, but you can see it's it's equally as tender on this side. I'm not sure. If, there we go. Now you can see, it just falls apart, and that's what you want. All right, there we go. The roast is pulled, and now now it's time to make our sandwiches and make our plates. All right, there we go. Um, there we go. We got um, pulled beef with homemade potato salad. Homemade coleslaw, Reverend Marvin's barbecue sauce. Got to give it a try. This stuff is awesome on pork and beef.